So here we are towards the end of the first chapter very clearly. So we have the verse over here. Aho bata mahat papam kartum vyavasita vayam yadraj sukalobhena hantum sujana mudyataha. So we are discussing here, Arjuna is giving more or less his concluding reasoning. And he's saying that, oh, but it's such a great sin. So he's saying that I am here and this battlefield, now Arjuna, as we know, is in the middle of the battlefield, in the middle of the two armies. And he's thinking that we are fighting this war and we are ready to kill. This is a great, great, atrocious wrong that we are doing. So how can I be doing this? And he's, he's you know, in one sense, this is his humility. There's a, there's a striking difference between humility and ego. Many differences. But generally, if you see, one, one difference is whenever we are doing any action, that action has some motivation. And we try to assign or we try to understand our motivation. So when ego is there, we try to assign the highest motivation to our action. I am doing this for your good. If I get angry at you and I yell at you, I say that that now, I, I did this because you are about to make a terrible mistake. Mm. And I did this only for your good. Why, why can't you understand it? But when there is humility, there is like the lowest motivation one it creates. Actually, I lost my temper. You know, I tend to just lose it sometimes. I'm sorry about that. So sometimes when an action is done, quite often the motivation is somewhere in between these two. Mm. It's a real motivation is in between. But what motivation a person assigns to one's actions is, is significant. So what happens is that here he's assigning the motivation Raj Sukhalobin. This is simply out of greed for kingdom. Now we have not gone too much into the history and it's worth going to the history over here. What is Arjuna speaking? Mm. If you look at the history, these two brothers, you know, it's I'm going to talk about this now because in the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna starts going more into philosophical reasoning. But if you look at the history, these two dynasties, the Pandavas or Kauravas, they are more or less contemporaries. And if you look at the overall history, the Kauravas have committed several atrocities. In many ways, they have attacked and tormented the Kaur Pandavas. Now, they tried to poison one of them, poison Bhima. Then they tried to burn all of them alive, including their mother alive. That was ghastly what they tried to do. Then they tried to they actually didn't try to just, they just defrauded them of the entire kingdom and stole their kingdom. Then, then after that, they even tried to dishonor them, disrobe their wife. And after, on top of that, now if you consider there was this one kingdom that was Hastinapur. And when the Pandavas had been sidelined, they created, they were given a barren patch of land, which they made into another kingdom called the Indraprastha, another kingdom. You don't want to get into the names. But basically, this was a kingdom that under the Pandavas expanded much more. Because they were such virtuous rulers, that it was a small place, but it became huge and prosperous. But then, 
and the kauravas did their whole scheming they so basically the kauravas were ruling here the pandavas were here but what the kauravas did was that through a scheme they just took this entire kingdom for themselves they took it entirely as their own kingdom and the pandavas were exiled to the forest they were basically living in a small kind of hermitage that's how they had lived for a long time for 13 years they lived like that and now all the pandavas were demanding was the kingdom that they had developed that they had got from their they had manifested in the wilderness so the pandavas were you could say the opposite of being greedy if they had been greedy they would have asked for the entire kingdom but the pandavas were even just our half of the kingdom they wanted and when they not not happening they were ready to sell even for settle even for five villages we are five brothers this gives five villages and we'll be happy with that so so basically See, they were not you, it's very wrong to consider that they were greedy but eventually what happened is he is thinking like this because he is so he's so concerned about the warfare he wants to stop the warfare he thinks that you know i am not really nobly motivated i am i am ignobly motivated i am motivated by greed so that's in one sense a sign of his humility that he is ascribing this motive to himself that its humility means to ascribe the lowest motive but sometimes humility can be at the cost of honesty hmm? where what is happening is because he just feel this war is so terrible and i want to avoid it so what is happening is he is taking a humble position but he is also in either consciously or unconsciously distorting the distorting the reality it's not they who are greedy in fact earlier he has said you see in 38 39 verses they are motivated by greed but we shouldn't be motivated like that but but now he is saying that okay we are fighting if we know all this is happening all this is likely to happen then if in spite of that we fight then what reason could be there other than greed so is so is our claim to the kingdom so important that we are ready to devastate the entire society for generations to come so oh he say oh but it's very sad that we are even contemplating this now there is something vital missing in his argument that he is thinking that arjuna's thought is fighting what will it lead to its consequences but one thing he is not thinking is not fighting will also have consequence so is it that all the people who are over there they are they are going to live peacefully the kauravas have a track record of being vicious so is it that suddenly they are going to become peaceful and let everybody let all the social order and everything go on well unlikely while the, in the period when the kauravas were ruling they didn't do too much disruption why they don't do too much exploitation or devastation or selfish uh, selfish excesses because they wanted to win over the population they knew that the pandavas are going to come back they're more popular they'll have a claim they wanted to support so they acted good but it's not that they had any change of heart and that was seen by how they utterly rejected this proposal derisively even for five villages so if the pandavas completely were off the picture then the kauravas would have no challenge and maybe that the dark side would cover out much more than and the result would be that they would devastate society so he is generally when they are mind start thinking when start thinking is when it goes in one direction it just goes a lot in that direction and yes fighting is terrible no doubt 
but uh, sometimes the we just don't have any good choices we are fighting or not fighting so and arjuna himself will acknowledge that later fighting is terrible but not fighting is also terrible so that part right now is not thinking and he will think about it in due course but i just wanted to bring it uh, up right now as i said earlier 38 39 he said that he said that they they are having greed but we are not mm-hmm. so they may fight but we should not mm? so but then he is saying that but if we are going to fight what reason could be there it must be greed now is it really greed it could be a higher reason but at this point he is to say no it's it's greed so is he being humble i would say it's more that the very fact that he can think of some this lowest motive for his action that itself is a pointer to his humility but in this particular context that is not the reason why they are fighting so i was making a more general psychological point that even for a person to think yeah you know when i got angry it is not about you it's about i only go off the handle at times a normal person would say you know you did this and you did this and you did this you deserve what i got what i gave you you deserve more in fact you asked for it rajuna is not doing that in that direction so that shows his thoughtfulness in fact uh, many of the commentators on the gita they say that the first chapter shows arjuna's qualifications for receiving spiritual wisdom that how arjuna is such a reflective person now arjuna is definitely reflective now that does not necessarily mean that all reflections are necessarily correct but the point is he is being reflective mm-hmm. so some people can be thoughtful but that doesn't mean that just because they are thoughtful they are right but if they are thoughtful then what will happen is when there will be a discussion they won't just be irrationally sticking to their opinions because they are thoughtful by further thoughtful deliberation they will be ready to revise their opinions so at, so his thoughtfulness is being shown he's on the no fighting train so he's just seeing that right now but when krishna will present alternative things he will also observe those in fact we'll see later that now his more his reasons are coming to an end some people say that arjuna just shot the war and he just got attack of nerves i can't fight but it was not at all like that because not once in the series see arjuna's reasons that are there what's not there what's absent is fear of his own death he not suffers. once does he mention that so his concerns are about something bigger than himself like say there's a big tech company and there's a big recession and that company is going to go under now the ceo could be worried hey i bought this mansion in in california how am i going to pay with mortgage or the ceo could be thinking i've got 500 employees in my family in my in my company how are they going to have their livelihood how, how are they going to take care of their, fa- their families so both could put them in anxiety but both are indicating a very different mentality so arjuna's anxiety is there fear is there indecision is there but it is from a very broad perspective he is thinking about considerations far bigger than his own safety and that's why the next text will come up which will say that what he is ready to sacrifice yadi imam aparti karam ashastra ashastram shastra panaya dhartarashtra rane hanyus so arjuna is saying over here that if he is now the they could say the war is two ways it's not just they are attacking he is attacking them they are also attacking him with the pandavas and kauravas So now, if the Pandava, if the Pandava decide that they are not going to attack, 
There's no attack from their side, but that does not mean that the Kauravas are not going to attack. They're going to attack. So he puts aside his arms, he refuses to fight, and they will kill him. He is saying here that dying is preferable to causing such destruction. Mm -hmm. But then again, what he's not thinking is maybe after his dying, the destruction is going to happen. Isn't it? Are they going to be satisfied? Okay, now we got your kingdom. Now we'll let everyone live happily. It's very unlikely. But again, his readiness is with unmake shame at the It's much better that we let everyone, let, they let, let them kill me, but rather than cause a destruction. Humility is definitely, he's saying that, not thinking less about, you could put this in there, thinking low about yourself and thinking less about yourself. Just makes it a little clearer. Thinking low means I'm a terrible person. And thinking less is, okay, I'm not such an important person that everything has to be about me. Less in terms of, less in terms of time, attention, thought. Let me think about bigger things beyond myself. Sarjuna is all about over here. So yes, he's thinking bigger things about himself, beyond himself. Uh, he is also, if you look at it, he's not thinking so much about when people say that you got an attack of nerves. There are different kinds of attack. There's the attack of nerves, and there's the attack of conscience. The attack of nerves means that a person just feels fearful. It's a big occasion. And what can I do in this big occasion? Conscience means a person becomes, you could say, hesitant. Why? Because they're concerned about, is this the right thing to do? So if Arjuna has any attack, it's not an attack of nerves. It's an attack of conscience. And normally when we use the word attack of conscience, it's when a person is about to do something wrong. If we are about to rob a bank, somebody is supposed to about to rob somebody's house. Hey, maybe I should not be doing this. So now in that case, it's clear that that person is doing something wrong. And that time attack of conscience is, is a good thing. Now, whether Arjuna is attack of conscience, because is it really clear that he's doing the wrong thing? That is, it's definitely not an attack of nerves. The attack of, you could say, if at all you want to use the word like that, it's more an attack of the, it's an awakening of the moral sense or activation of the moral sense. It's always there. But it becomes even more active right now. This is a real right thing to do. So that's what is happening to Arjuna. Okay. Let's go to the last verse now. So, Sanjay Vacha Ek Eva Muktva Arjuna Sankhe Rathopastha Upavishat Visrujya Sasharam Chapam Shoka Samvigna Manasaha So here, this is more of the conclusion of the first chapter. And there's a literal action which is quite dramatic. Arjuna is in quite a dramatic way. He's put aside his bow. He sat down. Both of them are indicating his decision not to fight. Warriors are in the battlefield. You know, that's not a place for, place for sitting down relaxing. That's not a place for putting down one's weapons. So he's just doing that. And at the same time, He's filled with grief. He's filled with lamentation. And it's like the Bhagavad Gita is present, talking about a situation where a good person with no good choices, no good options. In one sense, he a part of it is thinking that if I don't fight, they're going to kill me. If they're going to kill me, then that's terrible. And they're not going to kill me. They kill my family also. They kill everybody over here. So I just can't fight. I don't. It's just terrible. We'll talk about this further. But that's the situation. A good person with no good option. At least he's thinking fighting is not a good option. And Arjuna's bow 
it represents you know our will to fight our life's battles our determination our enthusiasm life is also like a battlefield and we all have to fight at times but sometimes it's just too demoralizing so arjuna is putting down his bow you could say today's word sometimes i just quit so arjuna is like that is put aside putting aside his bow and symbolically speaking by the end of the gita arjuna will pick up his bow and ready us to fight so similarly the gita for all of us we may be demoralized by various things in our life but by understanding the gita we all can regain our morale and we all can function enthusiastically with a more holistic understanding of reality and our place and purpose in it which is what the gita will subsequently tell so today we discussed about how arjuna first of all is ascribing the lowest motive to himself he is saying that we are fighting out of greed all well, that may not necessarily be true but that also shows his character in that connection we discuss arjuna's character his readiness to his reflectiveness even his reflection is not right but his reflectiveness shows him is 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 uh, readiness or his is uh, receptivity his qualification for receiving the gita's wisdom and then finally we talk about arjuna's uh, dejection arjuna is giving up his bow that his bow can represent our determination in life and the gita stands ready to help us regain our determination just as it helped arjuna regain this thank you very much